Good morning, everyone. Hello. How are you doing? I'm assuming we are live, Mr. Clark. Yeah. Excellent. Um, great. Well, welcome to everybody that's watching it live and those of you that watch it um, retrospectively. So we're here for another webinar, joined again by Adam, because I know you love doing these webinars. Yeah, can't get it. so it's always my favourite Friday when I do these. Love to be on camera. Mm -hmm. um, and Asian as well, which is normally in the background, but it worked so well last time, Asian, we thought we'd invite you to front of house again. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so today I'm looking forward to this one. Um, it's arguably a little bit more niche than some of the webinars we've done before, but of course we do speak to a lot of people that have to manage FGAS. Um, and we know that um, it can be a problem. So we wanted, um, partly through our association with the FGAS register, we wanted to talk about that in a little bit more detail. So Adam, I think you're in control. So if you click over to the yes. first slide, just to let you all know, what we're going to do is we're going to run through a couple of slides as we always do, but it's only going to take five or 10 minutes and then we're going to get into um, a look at the software itself so we can see how, how potentially we can help people. But first of all, we're just going to set the scene a little bit and talk about what are the regulations and legal obligations, which I'm sure um, our watchers um, are more than familiar with, but just helps to remind. And then we'll talk a little bit in the next slide when we get there. Um, I guess about some of the challenges that managing FGAS represents that predominantly conversations you're having, um, Adam, more than yeah. probably Asian and I in our capacity. Um, and then we'll see how potentially we can help deal with those issues and those challenges in the, in the software demo. Does that sound good? Yeah, that works for me. Excellent. So things to keep in mind. Well, as I said earlier, as most people are probably aware, um, the regulations, they kind of sit outside, don't they, of the normal service-led service management processes. Although they're very much intertwined and similar, they are a specific set of legal obligations in relation to the work um, that is FGAS specific. Yeah, it's a set of processes in their own rights, isn't it, really? Yeah, absolutely. So some of the examples we've got here are even things, and that's good on that, towards the, towards the um, left at the bottom is um, actually... It's quite typical that if you're in this industry, you might have engineers, some which, which are and some which are not um, certified to work with FGAS. Um, yes. And actually, things like that, if you've got a, a decent sized team, things like that can be difficult to track on its own. Um, and the other one that stands out for me, because I know we talk about this a lot with, with people, is, is that um, responsibility, that requirement to manage League tests. I mean, that that's that's pretty common in this in this side of things, isn't it? Yeah, it's one that I found quite well, like you say, quite common. And um, just because of the nature of, of how league test works, and there's obviously there's there's some sort of frequency behind him. It. it could be six months or twelve months, whatever it might be, depending on the system. Um, but yes, it's been reminded on those. We always find it's quite a challenge. It's something to keep in mind. I, I said in the slide. Um, but essentially, it's all around what we've what from my experience. Um, it's all around audit trails. Yeah. <clears throat> Having that clear audit log, um, which we got all towards the top there. You got um, referencing maintaining records of refrigerant losses and additions. Yeah. Um, so everyone, so this is the point we're making: is we're not teaching people what it is or yeah. what the requirements are. This is a you know a timely reminder. But what I actually say is the difficulties that people face, and that probably leads us nicely onto the next slide: is um, these regulations and legal obligations. What challenges do they present to people that have to manage it? Mm -hmm. um and and these are not you know this is not an exhaustive list there are many more that we talk about but these are probably fair to say the most common yeah from all the conversations i have with service officers in this particular industry these are the ones that i've drawn up as the most the most common challenges um and you can see from there a lot of it is all around it's all administrative tasks really yeah yeah office, yeah so. you're right the, the, the thing that strikes me about these types of conversations is, as I alluded to earlier, because it sits slightly outside of a normal service management process, even if people have a software in place at the moment, it's pretty rare that um, a service management system would incorporate the management of FGAS um, mm -hmm. in, a, 
in a, th a thorough enough manner. So as a consequence, am I fair to say that most people would then manage it outside of a system if they have a system? And that's going to be what? Excel? Paper? Yeah. My experience is they may have, they may or may not, they may or may not have a, a service management system or ERP system in place already, which manages a large proportion of their service work or reactive work or whatever their main part of the business is. However, it kind of ignores their F gases side and how they're managing that audit trail, what gases they use and that kind of thing. Yeah. So that always falls down to the likes of Excel, perhaps. So a very manual way of managing it, of, of someone in the office logging manually what sort of gases to use, um, put together a logbook for, um, in, in that sort of way. I mean, one example I found, I asked, um, I asked a client, or a, a potential client, um, how, do, how do you know which, which gases you've used on jobs? Where's your record of that? And they said they, the only way they know is if they sift through a load of old invoices of what they've actually bought. Really? Yeah. You, you also have to remember that for not every company, it's not the main focus of what they do. So you, you're going to have companies that deal with air conditioning units, and understandably, they're going to use a lot of F-gas. But you can have other industries that might not use as much. So catering companies, for instance, whereas, okay, they're man managing refrigerators, but they're also man managing griddles and fryers and ovens. You've got... Um, uh, pharmaceutical companies and laboratory equipment as well and again a proportion of that will require cooling so uh, it might not always be the top of their agenda of things to to manage but it's you know when when they haven't complied with legislation and they get in trouble that's when they realize that actually they do need something to manage uh, to manage that aspect of the business and that, that's important to say that because we'll talk about that a little bit later and what i'm conscious of is don't want to fear sell as they say but the reality is people do get in trouble for it don't they yeah i mean that, that's that's the reality of it okay so just summarizing some of these yeah records to be kept for five years what we're saying is if you're using paper-based methods or using excel it's like how do you ensure that a it's a bit of a nightmare to make sure it's accurate but how do you make sure it's safe and secure it's like where are you going to yeah. keep it how can you trust it yeah excel's great but you know for keeping an audit trail, it's it's too easy for people to go in and mess about with it and change it. There's no, and then there's no audit trail of the audit trail if that's not going too deep, if you know what I mean. If someone yeah. makes a change to an Excel sheet, how do you know who made it? What did they change that cell from and to? Mm -hmm. Who did it? When did it get saved? No, exactly. um, yeah, so it's um, it, it's fraught with risk, isn't it? And, and I suppose that is um, one of the key words to take away from today is, is risk, isn't it? What we're talking about in a lot of ways is how do we mitigate the risk associated with managing this process? Yeah. Um, we talked about engineers, visibility of data. Yeah, so it's not just about the fact that the data is there um, and it creates the audit trail, but actually if you want to go and interrogate that data, um, if you want to go and look for something that happened 12 months ago or three years ago, um, how quickly can you access it? How, you know, how do you know where to go and find it? Mm -hmm. um, and that obviously you've still got that bit we talked about earlier, which is when you do find it, how do you know that it's accurate? How can yeah. you rely on it? In some cases, it could be still manual paperwork and it's sat in the back of the filing cabinet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. How do you find that? And all of that leads into the increased admin burden because mm -hmm. regardless of how you do your other work, it's it's, a, it's extra work, isn't it? And it's heavy admin work because you've got to keep lots of records. You've got to know where they are. You've got to keep them in order. You've got to record all the information. Um, there, there's quite a lot of admin in this process, isn't there? It's not, it's not simplistic. It's not raise a job, complete it, put it over there. There is a lot of admin associated yeah. with it, isn't there? I mean, there is, which is why it leads on to that very last point. Risk of yeah, human yeah. error is greatly increased just because of the level of admin you've got to do to make sure you're compliant. Yeah, understood. All right, let's move on to, um, I think we've got a quote for the next slide, haven't we? So this is, yeah. the next slide. So this is very complimentary about us in the first paragraph, so um, people can read that, but let's ignore it. Um, in the second paragraph... Um, so this quote came from, I think we asked, I think we asked um, FGAS, how do they, the FGAS register, how do some of their members use uh, manage this part of the process if they don't have a system in place? Yeah. And this is, this is what's the response. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, what they're saying is the focus should be on delivering a good uh, service to the customer and making sure they fix things first time and make, make you know, ensure the customer's up and running, you know, not spending the time chasing the tail trying to fill in paperwork because ultimately, you know, it, it detracts from them actually delivering the service, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. Okay. So on to the next one. I think there's one. there's one more before we yeah, move off is, this yeah. um, slideshow. Um, 
So how can we help? If companies do not keep up date with their to date with their certification aircraft regulation, they could be liable for civil penalties enforced by the agency. So again, as I said earlier, that caveat of don't want to fear sell. But what we're saying here is we can help you through all of the things that we've talked about earlier around maintaining and updating records and then being easy to access and storing them securely. We want to help people avoid this happening. We want to mitigate this risk, don't we? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what I'll go into now on the solution if we're ready for a bit of demonstration from me. Yeah, I think we are. Yeah, excited. Okay. So... I've already got the um, system up and running. I've opened it in the, in our web, in the browser. So what I'll, what I'll do very quickly is just talk about the homepage again of our, of our solution, which I tend to do at the start of every, every webinar, but just to very quickly cover it off. And then we'll talk much more widely around the FGAS side and um, the, the modules within that, if that's good with you guys. Yep, sounds yeah. great. Yeah. So I've logged in, um, as any other user does in the service gene system, and it's a web-based platform. You log in online, um, and you put in a username and password, and each user gets their own homepage. So I've, just, I've actually logged in with my colleague Steve here, as you can see. But I've logged in as Steve, and you get your own. He, he's designed his own homepage here. So what we've got here is modules that I tend to use more often than not, drops on the homepage. So when I log in, yeah, I can get easy access to them. But equally, I've also got reports that are important to me on a day-to-day -day basis. So we've got KPIs here to indicate what's going on in the business on that day. And then we've also got what we call self-service reports here. Now, these reports are ones that I've set up in the background myself. So rather than go to, this, to us as a software supplier, the users can log in themselves, create a report that, that interests them. And I have a pull on the homepage or save it in the reports uh, module to, to access as and when. But I've dropped these two on here because I'm interested in the accounts that have the most sales and where the other, where all the jobs are in terms of what state they're in. Are they open? Are they closed? Are they need to be issued to engineers and that kind of thing? So you log in and you get a good indication of what's going on, what's going on around the business there. That's also pretty good, isn't it, really? Because it's, it's showing that person the information that, that they need in order to, to, to perform their business from day to day, doesn't it? Exactly. So you could have, as an example, you could have... Um, a user in the stores department having a complete diff complete different home screen to a user in the, the service or scheduling team just because for them to complete their jobs the type of data they need it was completely different yeah it's giving them information that's uh, that's useful isn't it yeah stores guys can have po's and purchase orders sorry and the service guys can have all the services that are due perhaps as a, as a quick example um, and then we have all these modules modules on top. So this is what the, the, the wider system covers but for today's purpose we're going to focus solely on, on the FGAS module. So if I jump straight into that, within, within, the, FGAS, within the FGAS module or of any, any module within the, within the system, so any of these here, it, it has its own sort of homepage behind that. So again, behind this homepage of the FGAS um, module, I've dropped down all the modules, all the programs within the system that I use, which we'll go through in a moment. And again, going back to the whole self-service reports and reports that are important to each user, we've got them dropped on here. So these reports that I've made in the past, but again, these are much more specific now to gases. So cylinders used, total amount of gas here in leak test pending. And again, same KPIs. So what we've really tried to do is at any part of the system, whether you're in the homepage or in a certain module, is just put all that information forward to the users so they can log in and access, they can see all the information they need to see straight away, um, which, is, which is what we have here. And again, if you have a different page here, it doesn't all have to look the same. So it's, it's sort of by preference, really. Yeah, understood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into these five modules one by one. So I'm going to start on systems first. Now, I've gone into systems module, into systems program here. And what is brought up is essentially, um, there's a different terminology for it, equipment, asset, or systems. And with what we've got here is then listed. So on every page within the system, you have keyword search. So you can come into here, quick keyword search on either, let's say, serial number, model, customer site, equipment ID, and it will populate the information here. So we can see here different types of systems. And with that, if there's a leak test due, we can see the leak test is due there. And you can see that these are actually all over due. We're due last year. So, so for, for simpletons like me, what's a system? Can you just break it down for that means? So a, system, a system is any equipment in the, in, in, on the customer's site or, or in wherever really that, that contains gases. Okay. So you need to list the gases in that system. So in this instance, is a system and a piece of equipment separate to the other pieces of equipment? So as I gave you the example before of a catering company, 
they'll have fr- fryers, mm-hmm. they will have griddles, baymaries, and they'll have a walk-in freezer to manage. Yeah. So yeah. would they be separate assets in different places or, or what? No. So although I've spoken about the FGAS module here, this FGAS module sort of links into the wider system. And what I mean, what I mean by that is these systems are actually pieces of equipment class in the, in class in the system. So they would also fall under the equipment module here. Now, the equipment module will show a whole list of assets that the business looks after. Could be anything that contains gases or doesn't contain gases. So that's listed in the same place um, for them to go and search for their various pieces of equipment or assets or systems. It makes it more efficient because if, if they're all in different places, that's just yeah. going to be a bit of a pain, isn't it? So you just, yeah. You're just flagging those that have this requirement. Basically, yes. Yeah. So within the FGAS module, for the, obviously, just because we're focusing on gases solely here, it shows the systems or equipment that contain the gases. However, yeah. as I said, you could, go, you could do a, a system-wide search and equipment, which would bring up both asset systems or equipment that don't need that do or don't use gases in one larger table um so from here we can look and we can get a bit of information around what's going on so if i look at the end of um, of a line let's say one of these assets here or systems sorry you can add documents on some if you needed to could be anything around that any information around that system we can arrange leak tests or raise leak tests if any are due we can also add new log entries which i'll come on to um later on this shows our test results, but you also get the option to view all the history as well. So if I hit this button here, it's now showing me, it's now brought, it's now brought up all the old job information um, around that one particular system. So any previous jobs, we've got a few repair jobs and a few leak tests and a few services, it's brought them up here and shows us what state they're in. And if I was to click into that information now, you'd get all the job detail too. So which engineer parts you use, um, financial, um, sort of financial information and any sort of certificates as well that would all be shown there i mean do you have any questions on that page adrian so far yeah so is it just job history can you see other things in there yeah yeah so we i know the answer see. i guess i'm leading i'm leading the witness a little bit yeah that sounded very like a leading <laughs> question to me <laughs> yeah well as you already know you can get contract history you can also get parts history too and po history excellent hires not too i don't think it's too relevant in this in this scenario but that's also there as well Full 360 view of that of that asset, basically, isn't it? Yeah. Everything from you know F gas history to job history, part history, quote history, everything. Which is yeah, crazy. essentially. So, and all you do is you come in here, keyword search could be equipment ID, serial number, whatever it might be, and you get that full 360 view as you called it there and then. So, what I'll do now is um, we'll go into. I've already got it open here, but I'm going to go into cylinder module now, which is here. Now, the cylinder module is slightly different to the systems module because what we're looking at now and focuses on is actual cylinders and the gases and where they are. So it's a similar view to what we, what we saw before. So it's a table view and the structure is very similar. What I didn't mention on the, last, on the last table is you can also change all the column options to show the information that, again, is important to you. I think but, it's worth understanding what different type of cylinders that there are because yeah. not all cylinders are equal, really, are they? I mean, they all probably look very similar. Mm-hmm. And we know what they do, but as you can see there in class, you have different types of cylinder and you can manage them in different ways, I think, can't you? Yeah, no, you can do here. Well, and you, you get all that information on this page anyway for all the cylinders, really. Um, so what we what we what we have what we see here is again more filter tools. So you come into here, you can search by cylinder type, which in this instance is virgin or recycled or reclaimed. You can search by refrigerant type, so we have all the refrigerants listed in there, which we can see there. Search by engineers, so you can see where, sort of which engineers use what cylinder, and also when it's been returned. And then what you'll see here is that information. So if we take a look at this location as an example, what we're seeing here is these cylinders, which we've got the IDs as serial numbers, and where they are. So HVAC refrigeration is what our site, our branch name is in, in this demo system. So that would be the office or the warehouse or the stock location. And then with that, we have the engineers. So you can see Stephen Lindsay's got a few, Adrian's got a few. And then with that, you can actually see the status of it. And it's highlighted here with a little logo. So are they full? Do they need, are they overdue? Are they empty? You get that, you get that view here straight away. And then the class, as I was referring to before, tells you if it's, I guess, is it, if it's your cylinder or if it's one that you've got to return, which is quite handy, isn't it? Because you've got the return date at the top. So, you know, you're going to get a charge if you, potentially keep a cylinder for too long, but if you can keep on top of it, I assume that you can then set up some kind of reports or notifications then, can't you, to yeah. say, 
these cylinders are due back, so do something, do something with them. Yeah, well, you could do a report, or you could come in here on a weekly or monthly basis and look at a date range. Yeah. And it'll pull that information up for you. So that's, um, that, that's, that's part of the system too. And then with that, if we wanted to, we can add new cylinders, we can do a cylinder transfer, so that'll be transferring cylinders from different stock locations or customer sites, or obviously vans too. So you've always got that audit trail we spoke about earlier. Mm. What's, of what's been what's been moved from one place to the other. So, and obviously, to comply with legislation against the cylinder, you've got a logbook. Yes. So that's the next point onto here. So at this point here, you can add new log entries, and we will come onto the logbook as well later on. Mm. Um, but here, you can then add new new log entries on these cylinders, so that it then adds to the wider logbook. Um, so you, again, you've got an audit trail, and no one's having to come in and manually sort of update this on a weekly or monthly basis in let's say an excel spreadsheet as an example mm -hmm. um so yes yeah, so it's quite a useful page this really it gives you a full a full idea of where all your cylinders are looking at this for me i think what it illustrates is how admin intensive this process really is oh yeah and that if you are trying to do this separately to your normal management system or externally you know and it's paper based or it's excel based or whatever it must be incredibly time intensive to manage it and be confident that it's it's up to date and it's accurate. And that, that's just jumped out at me. Obviously, I don't do this day to day. You're the guys mm. who are having the conversations at the cold face, as it were. I mean, it just jumps out at you. It's like, actually, this is really admin heavy. Well, yeah, because as an example, all, a lot of this information is actually coming from the engineers in the field and how they use the how they use the cylinders, what jobs they're on. By using our engineers' tablet, the software they use, the software they use in the field. Yeah, so they're doing a lot of the work while completing tasks. When I say a lot of the work, it's more data entry. Yeah, they do, and they get a bad rap as well. To be yeah. fair, I mean, in my time, and I've been doing this for 17, 18 years, and quite often the engineer gets a bad rap. They never fill the paperwork in right. They're lazy, but what people forget is they've got a lot to do. They've got, and ultimately, they're the customer facing. So they've got the customer on the back. They've probably got the service manager on the back. The person who uses the piece of equipment on the back. Then they've got to find the parts. They've got to diagnose what the problem is. They've got to fix it. Then they've got to record everything. So, you know, it's it really should be a case of how do you make it easier? It's easy to see how things can go wrong when you've got all of that pressure and when yeah. you're at face. So giving the, giving the engineer as many tools to do their job as quickly and efficiently as possible is really key to getting good data. And mm -hmm. good customer service, ultimately. Um, so if you can give them all the history that they need, if you can make it a one-click process to, to transfer gas from a cylinder into a piece of equipment and so on and so on, and it automatically does the rest of it, you're making their life easier. You're making them happier. You're making them more efficient. You're making the customer happier because they're probably getting the better service at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it is. I mean, uh, well, this, is, this is the key difference, and this is, I suppose, the underlying... Um, insinuation of everything that we're, we're describing around this this admin burden is what we're saying is if you can make the process part of your day-to-day -day jobbing process if you like so the information that you accumulate in here which becomes your audit trail is a byproduct of your normal day-to-day -day work yeah so you don't have to it doesn't have to be special even though it is, it just becomes part of your normal day-to-day -day process like any other job. If you lift it and shift it somewhere else and make it special and make it a separate process, all that time is added on, isn't it? That's where all that admin burden and all that unnecessary paperwork and, and admin comes from. Exactly. You've got to incorporate it into what you do every day, haven't you, without it being exceptional. Yeah. And then the important part of that is it's in real time as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's in real time and there's no burden in the office or admin burden in the office for someone to, to maintain that. And because, of course, they could have other jobs to do as well rather than update, uh, up, um, update a spreadsheet every now and again. Precisely. Okay, so I'll just move on to the last two sort of parts of the system now, one of them being leak tests. Now, this is just like a service reminder tool, basically, whereby the users can come in and they can, in the background of the system, um, leak test frequencies will be set up against contracts. So how often does elite test needs to be performed on certain systems or assets? So from that, the system can then remind the users when those when those elite tests are due. So I'll come in here and you'll notice there's a key, overdue, due in week, due in two weeks, and due in a month. Now, obviously I'm not very good at maintaining my elite tests because they're all overdue. 
that's essentially what he's showing us here. So the red, so you come into here, and you could do a filter tool, so you could filter by perhaps um, service date or an old sort of leak test due date, as we got as we got it called here, yeah, and then you would select a date range. So let's say a scenario, if you do your leak tests and you plan them every month, you can come into here, choose the month you can plan from, and it will then populate um, the leak test that needs to be performed. All we do then is, is raise them. I'm going back to something you said at the beginning when you were navigating around the homepage and you were talking about KPIs and reports. Yeah. Can we can you can we make this information accessible? Can we push it out to people? Yeah, well, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. So you could actually you could push it out to the users by way of the report in the office. However, we can also communicate this to the customers automatically. Well. What I was getting at was, and this is something that happens quite frequently, is you might have somebody that's got the responsibility for going and looking at when is something due. Mm. And then for whatever reason, because we're all busy, they go into here and they've not looked at it for a couple of weeks or 10 days or whatever. And they go, Oh no, these are overdue. Yeah. Yeah. What you actually want is the opposite. Don't you? You want someone to, you want the system saying to you, listen, agent, I know you're responsible for making sure leak tests don't go overdue. There's one due in, in the next five days or whatever the limitations you put on it. You need to go and do it. Yeah, and that's a scenario of what, we, as you already mentioned, the, the reports put on the homepage. So when you log in every day, you can see what you can see how many are overdue. And hopefully you, you get to a position where none are because you're being constantly reminded on a daily basis which ones to raise and plan. Yeah. Yeah. So, but better still, you can have it tell the customer that the service yeah. is here and ask them to raise the service for whenever's convenient for them. Mm -hmm. So it's all about being as proactive as possible. Um, I think one of the big things that I like about the way that, that FGAS is implemented into Service Genie is it's not a separate module as such. And I know we're looking at some of these things in isolation, but obviously we're looking at leak tests here, which are essentially planned services, aren't they? Basically, yeah. But you have, to, you have to come into the leak test specific page in order to raise leak tests. Well, that's, that will be part of the scheduling tools as well. So if you're carrying out other services, which I'm assuming a lot of our clients are, um, so we're talking not just leak tests, like you mentioned, just plans, planned services, maintenance jobs every three to six months, you could you would have them all listed in one in one module, one program, very similar to this. It looks exactly the same, actually. But instead of just being leak tests, it's all your service work and your leak tests tied together. So again, you're not having to go to a separate program in order to maintain leak tests because <clears throat> ultimately yeah. they're essential visit, aren't they? So everything can be viewed in one place or in isolation. Mm. Yeah. It's just part of, like I say, it's, this links into the part of the wider system, but for today's purposes, we're just like solely focusing on, on the FGAS side. And we have done other webinars as well on the scheduling tools and the equipment. So if, if anyone wants to see that in more detail, then we have them on our website as well. Um, so nice work. Is, you can tell he's done this before, can't you? Well, it's just, it's just an excuse to watch me again for half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then just to cover off the last two, the last two areas, we have consignment notes, essentially, obviously, waste transfer notes or whatever you may call them, which is just listing where, where they've been removed from. And they will populate the certificate. Um, and we can see here it's been removed from certain companies and it's been taken to wherever. So, again, it's just an audit trail. So, as you, led, as you mentioned earlier, Gary, all that, the level of admin needed to manage this whole process, there's another part of it here as well, and just managing mm -hmm. waste. So we've tried, to, we've, we've covered that off here as well. So and this is a really important part of the um, audit process, isn't it? Yeah, where's, where's, where's the waste and gas going? Because that's, so that's the type of thing that the evaluation agency would rock up and say, show us. Yeah, exactly. And we can see who did it, their F gas certificate, their certification number, refrigerant type, and the cylinders and the dates. It's all listed there. And we can create a new one if we needed to. Um, and then lastly, we'll just look at logs. Now, logs is basically incorporating everything we've spoken about up to the, in this demonstration. So this is the logbook. Now, this is a logbook company-wide. If I come into here, I can search by certain log types. So I can filter tool that. I can search by refrigerant types and by engineers at a certain time period. And basically, it brings up all that information. We can see customer site, log type, the, the amount, and then obviously the equipment and, and type of cylinders and whatnot. So importantly, it shows us here what type of activity has gone on. So this is this is the single source of truth, isn't it? So that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Against every element, against a cylinder, against a piece of equipment, against a job mm -hmm. specifically, against a site, against an account, 
And any other level, you have very specific logs pertaining to that actual transaction or um, that area or company, et cetera. <clears throat> but obviously, if you get audited, and that's great for day-to-day -day usage, obviously, but if you get in audited, they want to see logs from a certain time period or for a certain customer, then you can just come in here and you can yeah. put it in any way you want. That's and it. Then, yeah. And then what can you do? So if I filtered that data and I want to look between a certain date period for a certain type of refrigerant, for a certain engineer, for a certain date, then what, what can we do with that information? Is it just there on screen or? Well, you... it's there on screen for you guys to view, but if you get audited, you can show them this, but you could also export that information right. if you wanted to. So you can export it into Excel or PDF and you can export all the information or just the selected columns. What, and what I mean by that is, like anywhere else in the system, you just what's in view. You can view what you want to see. So I've got these ones, but if we want to see engineer example or results, we can drop that on there too. Um, so again, you can export this information if you need to, but should you need, I'm not, sure whether, I'm not sure whether you should need to or not really, because that's the information is there for you to see and you can search for it all. You might need to send it to, <clears throat> to the FGAS register or someone yeah. like that as order reports. And if you do, yeah, and if you do need to do that, well, we'll just go into the logbooks and it's a couple of clicks and you've got that information up to date in a spreadsheet. Yeah, as as I said, this is the this is the culmination of all of the um, hard work that you've done. Yeah, to actually produce all of the things that we spoke about going back to the beginning of the conversation. Where's our audit trail? Yeah. And this is it. So it's all manual. It's all um, automatically. Um, kept yeah, it's a byproduct. It's a byproduct of just doing your normal day-to-day -day stuff. You don't, this is the whole point is that you don't want it to be too much of a separate process. You want to incorporate it into everything else that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you want the information to be accumulated in the background naturally as a consequence of doing that work, don't you? Yeah. yeah. This is the exactly engineer's got to write it down something. anyway. The engineer's got to record a movement of something. So, you know, instead of him doing it on a piece of paper, then that piece of paper going somewhere else and it being stored somewhere else and, and then, you know, having to find it, it's just a, a nightmare. Whereas... If it happens once, it's then it's there, it's indelible. It can't be lost, it can't be tampered with. It's exactly as you want it, isn't it? Exactly. And it's all there in a, within a few clicks as well. And you're making the, the engineer's job easy, which is, yeah, which is good. Yeah. So that sort of um, concludes what I plan to do as a demonstration. Um, do you Thank guys you. have any further points or questions you want to add to that? That's it. Um... You're going to head back to your slideshow. I think yeah, we've got... Just, uh, finish on, on this now. Very smooth, that. Uh, well done. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an obvious statement to make, but if people do have questions, because there's so much more there that we don't have time in these webinars to talk about because we have to limit them to keep them, uh, to keep them moving at a, a fast enough pace that people don't get bored with us. Um, <laughs> So if generally, if people have questions or, or they want to chat it through, then um, there'll be no hard sell from us. It is genuinely an open channel to to discuss it. And I can see that you've put your contact details on there specifically. So nobody else yeah. gets an opportunity to talk to you. <laughs> it's very, very <laughs> My phone's already going now, actually. There you go. Um, well, all that's left to say is, is thanks for watching. Um, thanks to you, Aidan, to Adam for participating. Um, I genuinely find that really interesting because it's a part of the system that probably I'm, I'm least familiar with, um, mm. but it looked and, and sounded great. Um, so thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. It's been an, another good webinar. Yeah, let's hope so. And let's hope we'll uh, be doing another one in the not too distant future and, and hopefully people join us on that well as well. But for now, thanks everybody and see you again very soon. Cheers. Oh, Take care, guys. Cheers, thank Bye -bye. you. See you later. Bye.